Hi everybody, uh, it's the last day of May 2023, about 2.30. We are at the Litchfield Land Trust um, on Route 202 in Connecticut. We're at the Upper Bantam River Preserve. We're on the Red Trail and um, we want to go today exploring off trail. So we said we were going to do it. Today we're going to do it, of course. We have our river for navigation. We've talked about that. I won't get into that. Um, but from the red trail hooks on down into the yellow trail and then it loops back around but we want to see what's off trail so you can see what we're facing hopefully we're on a high point here it's kind of a ridge and sort of a cliff and then it goes down to the river we're going to follow this around and hopefully it comes down lower like you see it on the other side and we find ourselves a nice little out of the way place so that's what we're going to do now it might be a little tough going in there but that's what we're going to do. We said we would demonstrate it and we're going to and we're out looking for tracks or any kind of cryptid activity today. So that's that's what we're up to. So let's get in there. So do you know what CSIS is? Everybody out there, you know, we love you. We love you. We are Connecticut grown right over our hearts. You know we're going to check ourselves for ticks after this and if you uh, if you want to try this for yourself and i recommend it because that's where you find things that no one's seen uh, you definitely want to do a tick check we're going to do that we're down by the river now Well, we're, we've gone as far as we could without getting in the water. Um, but we're doing this for you guys and for ourselves. We're also, we started to look for arrowheads. Why not, right? We're always out here. We're going in. You like this one? I know what everyone's thinking. I hope he falls in, right? <laughs> I ain't falling in. You wanna see the oh. oh, it's a campsite. There's chairs over here. There's chairs. Guess we found our spot.
So, um, looks like an old barrel strap tied to a tree. This is an ironwood tree with baling wire. We got some old iron tractor parts, I'm guessing, or truck parts. We got us some chairs. One, two, three, four, five, six chairs. We got us a little rake to clean our area with, if we were so inclined. Huh? You remember this? Is, these are good for roosters. And then I find, obviously, a fire pit. Um, yep. So I'm seeing a bunch of points, probably in the cardinal points. And then, of course, this thing. Some old tubes and sticks and stones. Now I'm not touching. Camera person saying, "Listen, so take it from me. When you see these kinds of things in the woods, don't touch it. Oh. <laughs> Purposely. If you touch it accidentally, that's one thing. Um, I certainly have an idea of what I think this is. There's a trail here." Now I can see a trail. Of course, we didn't do that for you. And yes, in case you're wondering, yeah, I did fall in. <laughs> Water's nice and my phone still works. So what do you think, camera person? I say we sit here and pull up a chair. So this is the kind of thing you find. Now people don't put these things on the trail because they don't want you to find it. My guess is it serves a couple of functions fish a swimming spot. I just demonstrated that for you. Fishing spot, this is stocked with trout. You could probably still catch some low water. And campsite. And other uses, I'm gonna say. We're gonna leave it like we found it, but we are gonna take advantage of these chairs and have a break. Oh, wait. Okay, we're in Litchfield. You heard that one in Bristol. So for our, for our friends in Bristol, that was me. Yeah, camera person gets like a, sort of the same feeling I get. Well, I can tell you one thing, that is definitely not a Sasquatch structure. And because you know, Sasquatch isn't big on aluminum rakes and plastic chairs, but we're gonna. This is one of the most peaceful, soothing places around the area. I mean, clearly people come here because they left us these chairs. Um, but it's, you really should come here. It's free and, you know, the water's really clean. I can tell you it was warm. It's not too deep right now. This is just a fantastic place. There's so many birds, so many fish in the water. It's just, this place is just abundant with life. Did I just hear a call tap? So, um, the reason I know that we like to go to new places a lot, but the reason we revisited this place is because we wanted to go upstream. I had a choice of going upstream or downstream. So I'm not in a survival situation. I'm in a recreation situation. I was looking for a swimming hole or a little private CND beach. Um, so I tend to then go upstream or w away from um, where the people are. And that's why we're here today. And we were hoping to find some tracks 
heard a tapping sound. It was inconclusive. But that's, that was our main objective today, is to find a spot that we could just come to and, and relax and look what we found, a place with six chairs. Fire pit that, that we're not gonna touch. That's it. So, so calm, so quiet. It's a great way to just observe because you just don't, I mean, you don't know what any kind of animal is going to walk up or down utilizing this water. And of course, then you have chances to see other undocumented animals. Unless you're lucky like we are and you stumble across chairs, there are no facilities. But there's much more life. Life in a greater biodiversity in a, a ecosystem that's just teeming with all types of living things and those habitats that sustain those living things. And we certainly don't ever want to lose these land trusts. If anything, we want to see more of them. Greenway, like this, provides a lot of um, accessibility to bigger forests. And they're just beautiful. That's real. You see, we're not leaving any footprints here. There's just nothing. I mean, it's gonna be real hard to see any footprints on this. If you, um, so when you first come into this land truck, on the Route 202 side, you're gonna be on that side of, of the Bantam, Upper Bantam River. And uh, this is the first time we got to this side. And I highly recommend it, because it's just, a, it's just open and easy to, to access. Um, and that side, even though ultimately we have to get back over there, um, I'm seeing several ways I could just jump over there from here. But, we're gonna go ahead and go down a little bit because this trail does follow this river and maybe we can just find a nice easy access point. And we're still looking for that sandbar and we are definitely out squatching. I'll wait till, the, till there's no airplanes. Yeah, right there. Guess I'll try a call tap here. Thuds, heavy thuds in here. Like entire trees are falling. Thud, I can, I can feel them. And of course, we've heard those several times. That definitely to me sounds like man, you know, man-made activity. And anytime you're near babbling brooks, you know, they sell these sound machines that make the sound, white noise. You tend to hear things over the white noise. Your brain is trying real hard to interpret the sound. And make it understandable, make it coherent. And it's a creepy effect. All right, let's move on. Tell you one thing. There is a really nice 
crop of skunk cabbage here. And bugs, which one just got in my eye. Oh, uh, whoops. Yeah. Brand new hiking boots. Uh, let's see if I can get this bug out of my eye. Is there a bug in there? Pour some water over my face. Good to have water with you. So when you get those black flies in your eye. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that with Gatorade. <laughs> or soda. I guess if I had to make a choice, I'd go with Gatorade. Why don't we try it? Why don't we try it? Get out here. No. No, that's, that's probably... I'm sure somebody's done it on YouTube or TikTok, so let's just see if we can find some footage of that. Stupid people putting Gatorade. So we're in this um, real muddy area, and we found this very cool platform. It's kind of kind of hard to get on it and off of it. So whoever built it probably built it thinking of high water but I mean that is a heck of a step just makes you wonder what the heck it's all about but so you know I told you earlier we're looking for tracks and while when you see a place like this with, with this um, these plants here growing skunk cabbage and just mucky mush that's where you want to look for some prints some sizable prints of a cesis field investigator that fell into mud with approximately a 13 inch um, footprint weighing at a, oh, I don't know, 500 pounds with a stride about like this. And then you could see where that, that hominid fell backwards into the mud and almost got covered in this nice, rich mud, which is not the kind of stuff you use for a spa because God only knows how many or how many biological organisms are growing in that it probably numbers in the trillions. So yeah, you don't want to consume that. But this is the place you want to look for. I'm going to take a plaster cast now and measure it against one of my own footprints so that we have we have a side by side comparison of a of mine and, and a buffoon hominid. This that time fell. I'm not gonna fall in. Yeah, let me look at so they built this here. Look at this, look at it. <laughs> yeah. These footprints look really similar to the ones on the other side. We got a nice DNA sample of a black fly. Feels like he's still in there. Okay, so we were out looking um, for tracks. It's hard to track in here. Um, <clears throat> we got up to here. This is the Bantam River. This is the Litchfield Land Trust easement. So easement is for flooding and no development. And we were right here. Uh, this is where we, we went on this side, climbed over the dam, got to the other side. I fell in right around here. <laughs> and then we, we were sitting in chairs that were up there. And then we proceeded back down to right around here. And so this other side is a lot more interesting, uh, easier walking. And you can get all the way up to this spot if you cross over right here. And that's a nice little spot. We were looking for arrowheads. We didn't find much in the way of tracks um, or arrowheads. Um, so now when we go out, we're gonna try to find something like that as well. Maybe get some little puck wedgie arrowheads. It's interesting, I've mentioned it before, but there are tiny arrowheads. And of course the myth is that 
The local tribes would have made those as gifts for the little people, puck wedgies and other names. The Mohawk name is incredibly interesting. Um, but they seem to be quartz, white quartz tip, quartz rock. And um, I don't know, it's speculation. Are they gifts or are they little arrowheads? Which that's what I believe. You know, you're, you're yay tall, right? So you think about that, a native red squirrel or a chipmunk is a pretty good meal. And you could probably, you, know, you could probably get one, I would guess. I'm not gonna try it probably get one all right well that's it in conclusion we had a great day so we showed you how to come down cross over get to the other side and find yourself a nice little sitting area um, we'll see you out there when we get to a proper investigation this I, I don't think we can call this one one of those things we'll just call it the weird things you find off trail Um, last time we were here, we found some really nice X structures and, and some directional broken limbs up high. And there's plenty of that now. Um, but what I see is some of the X's that we saw, the recent storms have come through and just wiped everything out. <clears throat> you can't really say what's a potential structure and what's just fallen trees because now the fallen trees are everywhere. I have no doubt you could find some, and you could probably find some aquamarine in here. And you could probably find some quartz points, tourmaline, barrel, garnet for sure. You have the garnet state. The pit of light, maybe. Uh, it's it's a good place to find some precious stones for sure. You start kicking around in the pegmatite and the quartz, and there's a lot of it here.